President Obama lashing out at Republicans today for putting America's credit rating at risk by not working out a deal to extend the debt ceiling and the president insisting the GOP agree to tax hikes as part of any larger plan to reduce government red ink. Joining us now is Republican Senator Orrin Hatch of Utah. Welcome, Senator. Any chance of those taxes going up? I know you came out. You were very unhappy with the president talking about the need for tax cuts specifically on the wealthy. Well, that's right. Not, not uh, the matter of fact is he tried to increase taxes when he had 60 senators here and he couldn't get that passed. So how does he expect to get it passed now that he doesn't have that overwhelming majority in the United States Senate? Look, uh, I've got to tell you that, that our revenues have gone up like 8% since this president has taken over. Spending has gone up almost four times more to 30%. And that's the problem. It isn't a, it isn't a problem of revenues. We're going to get to the point where we have about 18.4 percent revenue, uh, revenue to GDP, uh, and, and that's usually what it's been over the last 40 years, whether you raise taxes or lower taxes. And what he wants to do is raise taxes at a time when this economy is down, when you know there is really no way of creating jobs by raising taxes. He just wants to spend more money, and the Democrats uh, continually look for every possible way that they can spend more money. Right now, they're trying to change the LIFO rules with regard to corporations, last in, first out accounting rules, because that would get them $69 billion more, but all of that money would be passed on to the consumers, in other words, the taxpayers in America. And frankly, it, it, it's, it, they'll look at every possible tax increase they can because they keep themselves in power by okay. spending. Now, for the president to get on there and blast Republicans, I mean, it shows how, I think, I think, uh, afraid he is of what, what he's going into in this S next election. Senator, a lot of Americans would like to see a resolution on the debt ceiling. They're beginning to feel very concerned that there might not be by August 2nd. What's your best guess? Will you get to that point where we will see a raising of the tax, uh, de the debt ceiling rather, so that, you know, there it is on the calendar, so that uh, we don't lose our AAA credit rating? Well, first of all, they said they had to have the debt ceiling lifted by spring. Now it's August 20, August 2nd. Now they're saying August 22nd that they can uh, manipulate the uh, debt so that, so that it's not going to be catastrophic. But look, with, this is the only chance we have to get this administration to quit spending us blind. And we're just going to have to follow through on it. And I think the American people are starting to wake up to it. But I know this, that they'll start scaring people that they're not going to send their but, social uh, security checks. Can, can I just say, Senator, the American people are some of the constituents in some of even your regions who say, yes, cut the spending. You know, you've got the Tea Party, very vocal uh, group saying, cut the spending. And then they start to see, wait a minute, that might mean that I won't get all my Medicare uh, payments paid out. And I think that maybe if everybody feels it all together with the cuts, that that may be the real answer. Where do you see the most opportunity for wiggle room as the, the, the Republicans negotiate with the Democrats here? Well, with a $3.7 trillion budget, you can surely pay the Medicare, Social Security, and other payments. There are all kinds of ways of making sure that those payments are going to be paid. But I've got to tell you this, if we don't hold their feet to the fire and get some spending restraint and spending reductions, <laughs> it's going to cost our citizens down the line uh, where they won't, they won't be able to make those payments. I've got to tell you, they're spending us blind. And that's the way Democrats have kept themselves in power all these years. And I think the only leverage we have right now to get them to quit doing it is to uh, not lift that debt ceiling uh, uh, unless we get some really serious spending cuts. And frankly, so far, they, all they can talk about are tax increases. And let's face it, that, that, that isn't going to cut it. We're, so we're, people are taxed to death as it is. Now, Senator, what do you do about tax policy reform? You're on the record saying that it shouldn't be connected at all to these deficit reduction negotiations. So how do you tackle that? Well, what the, what the Democrats want to do and the president want to do is they want to take away certain tax expenditures and call them, they call them loophole, well, I, loopholes. Well, I don't think home interest deductions are loopholes. I, I, don't, I don't think the charitable deductions are loose, loopholes. And frankly, most of the tax expenditures are there for good reason. Now, if we're going to do it, though, then we should do it in overall tax reform, bring taxes down, level taxes out, make the tax code more simplified so that people know how to fill out their own forms and not spend on average somewhere like $800, a, between four and $800 a family. And uh, that's what we've got to do. And what they want to do is do away with these uh, so-called tax expenditures so that they can raise money to spend. And 
When are we going to wake up and realize that Democrats would are you give, spending us blind? Would you? You've said that four times, so I, I know that that is a very passionate issue for you. But, it sure but is. let's get right to the question: Would you support the? elimination of certain tax deductions for industries that are well established such as the oil industry doing very well making profits and and certainly paying their taxes which we of course appreciate would you would you at least support the elimination of certain tax deductions well, which is something depends. Ronald I'm, Reagan I, did in the past I think we should look across the board on all tax expenditures and see which ones are worthy of keeping which ones aren't but we shouldn't give the, uh, do it in the way that gives more tax money to spend uh, by this administration. We ought to do it in a way that will help us to simplify this right, god-awful tax code. It's just awful. Implement the tax, uh, also implement the spending cuts. I think Americans are getting to the right, point where they want mind, to see that. Keep in mind, the so-called rich you're talking about include about 800,000 pass-through businesses, small businesses that create 70 percent of the jobs. And if you start taxing them the way the president wants to tax them, you're going to cause even more chaos in this economy. We won't have as much revenue, even if you raise revenues, you won't have, uh, if you raise taxes, you won't have enough revenues to be able to run this country. So, you know, it comes down to cutting back on spending and living within our means, right. let, stopping the federal government from dwarfing everybody else in the world, and, and basically do the things that are really right economically. And I have to tell you, all they want to do is increase taxes so they can spend more. All right. So the takeaway, though, from the president's remarks today is that no real progress has been made toward reaching deficit reduction, debt ceiling deal. Senator Reid has suggested, in fact, nixing the July 4th recess. What do you think about that? And what's it finally going to take to make progress on this issue? Well, if it's up to me, I'd, we'd, we'd skip the July 4th recess and stay here and work these problems out. And I'd skip the, Oct the August recess, too, to stay here and work things out. If that's what it takes, I, I'm willing to do it. So you're supportive uh, of Senator you, Reid making, if he does indeed do that, he, you're supportive of working all the way through July 4th? Well, that's a nice thing to talk about, but I've got to tell you right now, we've been here this whole doggone year and we've had about 80 votes. Mm -hmm. And frankly, they've been very inconsequential. They haven't, they haven't been dealing with the budget like they should, and frankly, haven't been dealing with taxes like they should. And, I just believe that, uh, you know, there's something wrong going on right here, right now. And I'm willing to stay. I'm willing to work on it. I think we ought to work on it. But I can tell you right now, Republicans are not I in any way wanting to increase taxes on the, on the so-called small business sector of this country, which, of course, is 800,000 businesses that would be hammered by the Democrat program. Senator Orrin Hatch, we thank you very much for joining us today on Fox sure. Business. We appreciate it. Sure.